It's four o'clock, so it's about time to get started. Uh, thank you so much for coming out this afternoon for our lecture on global challenges and careers in language education. The threat of snow kept uh, some people away, um, but thank you all for coming out. My name is Dr. Alec Cattell, and as the director of the Global Readiness Through Language and Culture Project, it is my pleasure to welcome you. We are going to be recording the session this afternoon, so if you could um, silence your devices and keep keep your voices quiet, and if you have to leave, do so quietly. We'd appreciate it, thank you. We'd like to extend a special thank you to the Texas Tech Center for Global Communication um, for their support of this lecture series. We designed this series for you, students at Texas Tech, in order to help you identify transferable skills and explore career options with a degree in languages and cultures. Most importantly, we want you to understand that these careers can in fact pay the bills and also position you to address some of the most pressing issues facing our global community today. For instance, in the areas of human populations, conflict, natural resources, technology, information, economics, and governance. Today, we will hear from three local teachers of languages other than English. Um, they're gonna tell us about what it's like to be a teacher and also how their work connects with global challenges. So now I'd like to welcome to the stage Jeremy Hogan, Omar Palafox, and Emily Van Don. Please join me in welcoming them. So thank you very much to all three of you for being here today. Before we get started with our discussion, I wanna share with you a brief video clip of a man named Taylor Mali, and he, like the three of you, is a teacher, and he is also a slam poet, a humorist, and a voiceover artist. So in this short um, comedic routine, Taylor reflects on an uncomfortable dinner conversation he had, um, where one of the guests asked him, come on, Taylor, you're a teacher. What do you make? with teachers is what's a kid going to learn from someone who decided that his best option in life was to become a teacher? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. He reminds the other dinner guests that it's true what they say about teachers. Those who can, do. And those who can't, teach. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh. I decide to bite my tongue instead of his and resist the urge to remind the other dinner guests that it's also true what they say about lawyers because we're eating after all and this is supposed to be polite conversation. I mean, you're a teacher, Taylor. Come on, be honest. What do you make? And I wish he hadn't done that. Asked me to be honest. Because you see, I've got this little policy in my classroom about honesty and butt kicking, which is if you ask for it, then I have to let you have it. <laughs> you want to know what I make? I make kids work harder than they ever thought they could. I can make a C plus feel like a Congressional Medal of Honor, and I can make an A minus feel like a slap in the face. How dare you waste my time with anything less than your very best. I make kids sit through 40 minutes of study hall in absolute... <laughs> no, you may not work in groups. No, you cannot ask me a question, so put your hand down. Why won't I let you go to the bathroom? Because you're bored and you don't really have to go to the bathroom, do you? I make parents tremble in fear when I call home at around dinner time. Hi, this is Mr. Molly. Hope I haven't called at a bad time. I just wanted to talk to you about something that your son said today in class. To the biggest bully in the grade, he said, hey, why don't you leave that kid alone? 
I still cry sometimes, don't you? And that was the noblest act of courage that I have ever seen. I make parents see their children for who they are and who they can be. You want to know what I make? I make kids wonder. I make them question. I make them criticize. I make them apologize and mean it. I make them write, 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 and then I make them read. I make them spell. Definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Definitely beautiful. Define nightly. Be beautiful until they will never misspell either one of those words again. I make them show all their work in math class and then hide it on their final drafts in English. I make them realize that if you've got this, then you follow this. And if somebody ever tries to judge you based on what you make, you give them this. Here, let me break it down for you so you know what I say is true. Teachers, teachers make a difference. Now what about you? All right, so with that, let's go ahead and start our discussion. All right, maybe we can start out with some introductions. Um, just go around and um, say who you are and um, what areas you teach. Hello. Okay. Uh, hello. My name is uh, Jose Omar Palafox Sainz. I uh, teach Spanish at Lubbock High, and we have five levels, and I think last year I taught a six level. Uh, so it's exciting to be a Spanish teacher. Um, where am I from? Does that be yeah, sure. something to interesting? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I'm from Guadalajara, Mexico. Uh, I grew up in um, the second largest city of Mexico, and I've been teaching for about five years Spanish at Lubbock High. Okay, my name is Emily Van Don. I am the French department at Lubbock High. If you teach not Spanish, you're usually the only one. Um, but don't fret because it can be a lot of fun to have that much control. Um, I teach French 1 all the way up through French 5, um, both in the AP and the International Baccalaureate programs. So we do a lot of really cool things in class. Um, I'm from originally the East Coast, but got to Texas as soon as my parents could force us, um, and uh, went through school both in Friendship and Lubbock ISD. So the classroom I teach French in is the exact same one as I learned French in. Um, and that's been a really cool and sometimes kind of depressing experience. Um, I never wanted to be a teacher. My mom was a teacher, my grandma was a teacher, and I saw how hard they worked, and I decided that's not for me, so I went to Texas Tech to pursue a degree in history, um, and while I was pursuing that degree, I had to have a language credit, so I took French classes again and remembered how much I truly loved it, and then realized that I could actually earn college credit to go on a trip. So I went um, on a study abroad experience, but I knew myself and how lazy I could be um, in terms of learning and decided that if I was going to study abroad, I was gonna make the most out of it and I needed to go to a country where I wouldn't be able to just ask people in English when I couldn't figure things out. So I ended up going to Dakar, Senegal and learning a lot of French there. Came back, finished my degree, started working on my master's and didn't really like it very much. And then there was an opportunity to teach at Lubbock High and I decided, well, why not? If I don't like it, I can quit after a year. Um, and this is year eight that I've been working there. So I guess I do like it. Um, and it's been a really wonderful experience and journey to see how much better my students have become in terms of their learning as I become better in terms of my teaching and even my language proficiency has gotten significantly better since I started. Hi, um, I'm Jeremy Hogan. I'm the German teacher at Lubbock High School and I'm in my fourth year there. 
I also do adjunct work for Wayland Baptist University, and I'm in my second year at the Texas Tech K through 12 department. Um, I actually, like Emily, I actually am born and raised here, but I also went, I went through high school here. So from my room on the third floor, I can see the hospital I was born in and the high school that I went to. If I could just see like Rest Haven, I can see my whole life through that window, but I don't have that view. Um, I actually didn't want to be a teacher after I went through the master's program for German. And then I ran into one of my professors and he said, hey, I got this email about Wayland Baptist looking for a, a teacher. You should apply, you'd be good at it. And so I did, got that job and then wanted to do more. And then the position at Lubbock High opened up. So I applied and got that. And then uh, about a year and a half ago, Tech emailed me and said, we're looking for somebody to do German uh, online grading for us. So I applied and got that job and I didn't want to do anything to do with teaching. I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, it just kind of fell into it. And it was kind of a weird process, but it's not where I am. I'm in my fifth year teaching German, fourth year at Lubbock High. And I'm also the, the German department. I do all of it from level one all the way up through five AP or IB, anything that needs done. Um, I do satellite work with Wayland as well. I've got students that are in Anchorage, Alaska, and it's just miserable when you're stuck here in the summer. It's miserable hot and they're in beautiful places. So it's, it's humbling at the same time. Uh, I studied for six weeks in Berlin. I lived there for a summer and then came back. I got credit for that. And then it just really helped get me ready for, for grad school as well. Um, to be certified, I took the alternative route because like I said, I didn't ever want to do this. I was pretty adamant I would never teach. Uh, and so I went through an alternative certification program where you don't have to do the student teaching. You don't have to go with an educational background. And it is about four or five months worth of work and observations and then you end up taking a certification exam for what you want to teach and then you take a teaching exam to be able to teach at the same time um, and it's good for quite a few years and there's no recertification so being able to teach is actually fairly easy you just have to never want to teach and then get one job and two jobs and three jobs and then now suddenly you're a teacher <laughs> great so some of you already addressed that, but um, maybe t talking a little bit more about what made you decide to pursue that career in teaching, uh, Omar, and then for all of you, or for those of you who took maybe the traditional route, so um, Jeremy mentioned having gone through the, the uh, alternative certification, if you could talk about uh, your experiences with that. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought we were just going to say our name and we were, <laughs> and then we were back to those questions. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm a student of culture. I've studied culture all my life. I live mostly in Latin America, but I travel in Asia and other places too. Uh, I'm actually a candidate for intercultural studies uh, doctorate. But uh, so teaching the language was only part of my life. Uh, I've gone through some Hebrew, some Greek, so it was not necessarily my expertise to be a language teacher. Uh, but we teach language and culture. So that's what attracted me to being a teacher. My wife has been a language teacher all her uh, career. She went through tech, she went through here. Um, I'm a LCU graduate, I'm an ACU graduate, I'm a Christian university, uh, and my degrees are mostly in, in culture. Um, I study currently at the Fuller Theological Seminary in Pasadena, California. So while I was doing all this work with my doctorate, I decided to, to teach, to have a set schedule to be able to expose myself to some of these things. I did the alternative certification also. Um, you have to take the content test, and that was easy. You know, the Spanish test was easy, but the pedagogy was the one that got me a little more uh, in the process. But it was really a good learning uh, time. Uh, what else would we have to mention? Um, I think teaching for me has been a very fulfilling thing because of getting to know the students. Uh, Lobokai, we have a diverse population, and I love that about Lobokai because we have students that come from all different backgrounds, and when you come to a language classroom, uh, they already have languages, so they're just doing what the curriculum for them is. Uh, I've enjoyed being with other teachers, like German and French, and, and connecting with the idea of how do we teach languages to people. So I think my learning to be a teacher of language has been a very uh, productive and beneficial one for me. So. Thank you. Any other thoughts about uh, certification or things to keep in mind? I think we're yeah. going to disappoint you because all three of us did alternative certification. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, but so my, my husband, who is also a teacher, sorry, another truth is when you spend that much time around students and teachers, you end up becoming friends with a lot of other teachers. It just works out better with your schedules. Um.